Welcome, welcome everyone. <laughs> this is, you know, we say this every time that it's exciting to be with you. This might be one of my most exciting times ever. Uh, I always get really jazzed when we can speak with uh, the wonderful actors who create the characters that we make toys out of. Uh, but as I've shared in the past, I'm an even bigger indie fan than any other brand. Uh, and it doesn't get any bigger in Indiana Jones than Karen Allen and John Reese davies So my name's Patrick, I'm here from Hasbro, but the focus for today is on Karen and John. So Karen Allen, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, it's, it's, it's fun. We just, uh, just saw the film and um, it's kind of fun to be, just to talk about it a little and. Very cool, and John Reese davies I think uh, dialing in from over in England, right? Yes, indeed. Can I show you my wonderful view? Absolutely. We'd love to see it. <laughs> That's awesome. Is that the that Thames? That is awesome. That's the Thames, and there is... London Bridge there, isn't it? That's right. Amazing. Very cool. Well, we are going to dive right in again. We've got some exciting questions. We've got some toys to talk about. Um, I just I have to contain my enthusiasm, but we're going to jump in uh, with Karen, obviously portrays Marion Ravenwood in the films. And I think we're starting with uh, a clip. So if we can roll that clip and then we'll dive into a toy unboxing. So that was awesome to see, you know, love seeing it 40 years ago. It's just as fresh now. Uh, and of course, in our line, we have a figure of Marion in that iconic white dress. So Karen, I think you have that figure with us. Would you like to unbox I it and do. we can talk about it? Do you want me to take it out? It, absolutely, yes. We can send you another one if you would like one in pack. <laughs> I think, you know, over the years, I have, amassed a number of these but here is this one me and my lovely white dress <laughs> and it comes with a monkey i can get it out comes with a little monkey that's awesome <laughs> so you obviously hinted at this um you know this is our retro collection uh, came about a few years ago, first time in Indiana Jones, and we're recreating those original toys. Um, so, you know, certainly this is a recreation of a toy, as you mentioned, that existed 40 years ago. Uh, I hope you got to see that figure. It sounds like you did when Kenner first released it 40 years ago. Seeing it today, how does it compare to your memories, you know, 40 years ago? I mean, the, my memories of, of probably seeing myself as an action figure for the first time. I mean, which is a kind of an amazing experience. Um, so, you know, I've ne you know, what's amazing about these is how the, the technology of creating these has developed over time because for the first time, the one that has just come out, when I saw it, I was amazed how much it actually looked like me. But, but these, you know, it's, it's, you know, there, there's something a little generic about them, but but then they're also the real deal. I mean, this is what uh, what came out uh, at the time. Yeah, and certainly our designers will talk about today, recreating those originals can sometimes be more challenging than the modern figure because they have to kind of recreate that sculpt and styling from 40 years ago. Um, do you have, you mentioned this, do you have any memories or associations with that figure from 40 years ago, that when you first saw it? But I think my only association is just the, maybe the first time I saw it, I, I was just sort of amazed. Um, my son had collected action figures from, so he was like obsessed with Star Wars as a kid growing up. And so, you know, we had been collecting various Star Wars action figures. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine I would ever become become an action figure. But uh, I think that was my really amazing moment was just when I saw it for the first time. I thought, oh my God, I'm an action figure. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, we'll, we'll certainly have much more with Karen, uh, but we'll get John into the mix. Uh, so similarly, I believe we have a clip of John Rhys-Davies, iconic character Sala from The Last Crusade. 
Um, John, we have a retro collection figure of your character, Sala, from Last Crusade in that outfit. Would love if you would like to unbox that and we can talk about it. Sorry. Unbox it. Oh, dear <laughs> that is Lord. A term in the toy world, yeah. Oh, it does come off fairly easily, this one. Ah, look at me. There I am, but this time equipped with a gun. There we are. Look at that. <laughs> you will have hours of enjoyment with that. Uh, so we talked about this with Karen. Our retro collection includes those recreations of beloved toys from the 80s, but they also include what could have been toys in that styling, and this is a great example. So that figure never existed in the 1980s, but it's been done in the style Kenner might have done for a Last Crusade Sala figure. So again, similarly, would love to hear what, what's it like seeing a toy for the first time now that could have existed 35 years ago? Well, I think the difference with this one is that there was one very similar to this, but it is an extraordinary experience of seeing yourself in miniature as a, as a toy. Um, uh, actually, the, the first one I saw was given to me by a then girlfriend who read, it, it, it said something like, movable, poseable at the, at the uh, shoulders, hips, and knees. Yep. Uh, and she said, That's, uh, that just about describes your acting, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I think I threw the doll away. <laughs> no, I oh, goodness. Uh, Karen obviously mentioned the Star Wars toys, right? And, you know, we lo I love indie first and foremost, but Star Wars is also close to our heart. And obviously there was an evolution in the figures. Uh, you mentioned the knees. So the indie retro figures back in the 80s were a bit advanced, which is certainly cool. Um, we also love the packaging style for our retro figures. So reminiscent and nostalgic for those figures that you know I played with as a kid. Uh, it recreates that original styling exactly. So this is uh, the, you know, the packaging for that figure, featuring that great film out where Saul is clearly resolute and ready for action. Uh, John, what was Sala thinking in that moment with that expression? I think that he was ready to defend uh, Brody, Marcus Brody, yep. who is probably disappearing into the back of a truck at that moment. Yep. So it's very much that. Absolutely. <laughs> One of those. That's fantastic. All righty, so that's our retro collection figures. Uh, as Karen mentioned, we have modern figures, our adventure series. And so we're going to see in a second a Marion Ravenwood adventure series figure. But first, uh, we will roll a clip from the Cairo market with Marion in that iconic outfit. I could watch these clips all day. Obviously, again, <laughs> adventure series figure. Karen, I believe you have that as well, if you want to open that up and we can talk I about do. it. So here's, here's the box, which is cool. Absolutely. And it's got like little photographs. And you know what's cool about this? And I just discovered it the other day. It's got one of these things where if you get all five of these figures, you can put together an arc. So that it, each one, I guess there's two pieces of the arc, mm -hmm. which is cool. All right, opening it up. So, in this one, here, this is, seems so that's that, and, and what was amazing to me when I saw it was how much it really looks like Marion in that early phase, and this is a, a much bigger, more detailed monkey, all right. Anyway, it's a very cool monkey yeah. in the uh, little outfit, the long tail. And I think there's a frying pan in here, too, although I'm not finding it right now. But 
often Mary comes with a frying pan. I think I, I did see it at one point. And then there are these little great cool pieces of the ark that you can put together. Absolutely, yeah. No, I think you mentioned the monkey has articulation. Uh, it's, I mm. believe, the smallest character in Indiana Jones with articulation and certainly one of the smallest in, in all of our lines. Um, and you mentioned, yeah, the face, the photoreal technology is something we started doing with yeah. figures a few years ago. And cool. of course, it's got all this great, you know, movement and such as well. So, of course, that earlier retro Marion figure is done in the style of the 1980s. Hasbro had a toy line in 2008, which certainly had a Marion figure. But this is the first time ever we've done Marion in six inch form that is this accurate with that photoreal technology with all of that articulation, uh, highly decoed, amazing sculpt. So how does it compare seeing this modern figure versus the 1980s version? Well, I just saw it for the first time a few weeks ago and I got a total kick out of it because it's just, I, it's the first one that I feel like actually resembles me as the character of Marion in, in that film, in Raiders of the Lost Ark. But I mean, all of the detail is amazing. Just, you know, the sandals and the detail in the sandals and detail in the shirt is incredible. Um, now, the first time I saw it, I, I got such a huge kick out of it. I, and I, you know, still, I'm, I'm getting a kick out of just looking at how well, how well made it is, really. Thank you. Thank you on behalf of the team who does it. I, I'm just the marketer, but our design team is fantastic. Um, and there's a whole, it's great, there's a whole culture of toy photographers. And to your point, they're so, the figures are so realistic. Uh, they will take the figures, create these environments, um, and at first glance, it looks like it could be a still from the movie. So uh, our team does a great job. We're really proud of them. Um, so shifting over, I believe we have one more clip to show and one more toy to unbox, and then we'll dive into the conversation. So we've got a clip here for uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Obviously, Sala in that film as well, in his dig disguise. John, I believe you have that Sala figure. Uh, would love to see it and hear your thoughts. Gosh, it's very hard getting this silly image. Yeah. Perfect, right there. <laughs> right there, very good. Uh, man, look what I've got, Karen. More oh, you've got the, is that the top or the bottom? That's the bottom. Cool. Uh, that's the bottom, yes. Yeah. You know, I I bet that Harrison Ford fellow's got the top of it. The top, <laughs> probably. <laughs> he's got probably the so. darn, he's got the cherubims <laughs> or are they cherubims or something like that. But anyway, <laughs> those of us who are in I love this. You got a rope? I've got a rope. A shovel. It's cool. Yeah, and you guys both mentioned the, the build an artifact feature. Uh, it's not something we do on all of our lines, but we loved it for Indiana Jones. It's such a great fit with the DNA. Obviously, the movies are all about hunting down these artifacts. Um, and so, you know, we know that fans will buy all of these and hunt them down in order to create that artifact. So, a uh, really great fit. Um, John, so, you know, we, we occasionally are fortunate like this to see stars like you guys unboxing or interacting with their action figure. But here you are seeing two action figures from very different phases of the character's life. The retro figure we saw from Last Crusade and this figure from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, and then, of course, we know that Sala appears in the upcoming film, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, in the trailer. No spoilers there. John, how was it for you to take Sala through his journey, and how do you see that journey played out in these different figures? Well, uh, really what struck me first time was the amazing plasticality of, of, of these things. I mean, this, is, this costume almost could be material. You know, it is, it, it is a very a very plasticized um, plastic, but, I, but, but, but what I mean is it feels like like material. Uh, I love the little, I love the shovel. I think that's wonderful. The, the coil, of course. Well, the whole detail is far greater 
Well, I love him. I th- I and I actually I I looked at when I looked at it the first time. I thought I don't really recognize me, but when I was just showing it to you just then, there was an angle where I actually did. Uh, there was an angle where I actually did see my face uh, as almost in a mirror, uh, and that that uh, was certainly quite close to the younger me, <laughs> the much younger me. Um, I'm very impressed by this. I think it's a superb piece of sculpting and and assembly. I think it's I think it's really rather rather wonderful and rather impressive. And this is the first time I I've, I've signed a few of these boxes already, but I hadn't actually opened one and seen inside. I'm really very impressed by this. It is well, it it, it is a generational jump from that funny little crude figure, you know, back in the 80s, which in itself was rather fun. But this is getting awfully close to being able to, you know, you could, you could pose this and, and, and make a little cartoon film out of it, couldn't you? Uh, it's almost, almost Salah triumphant, isn't it? Um, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> I love it. Well, and thank you for the kind words, uh, especially the comment about the mirror. I will definitely pass that on to the designer. Uh, that's the sort of comment that just makes someone's career. So I will definitely pass that along. And yeah, you guys both mentioned, you know, the soft goods uh, is something we haven't had in the past for Indiana Jones. Uh, John, you were getting at the durometer of the plastic, which is not a word I knew before I started at Hasbro, but... Yeah, the word D- durometer. Is, durometer, yeah. Durometer. I, I think it means what like how mean thick, or, how thick or thin, or how flexible it is. So you'll have some. Huh. Hopefully, I'm remembering the right word. Otherwise, I'm going to look terrible. But uh, it, you can have some very solid plastic. I hope you look terrible. Flexible. How do you spell this word that I've never heard before? Durometer. It's a good question. I think it's D U R O M E T E R. I feel like I'm in a spelling bee. <laughs> durometer. <laughs> I, found, um, I found a bird pen. There we go. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds it like is. durable and, and metered. Oh, look at you. Oh, there's, there's the prime pen. Yes. That's Marion's main weapon. I love where you're getting, <laughs> love where t- getting into the what, etymology I... of the word. It's very Indiana Jones <laughs> as a linguist. Uh, yes. So. We've been discussing action figures, but our line also includes a premium role play uh, Staff of Raw headpiece replica. Uh, We have an image of it uh, for the community to see. Uh, The piece is obviously a crucial part of the Raiders of the Lost Ark storyline, with both of you interacting with it in some pretty important ways. Uh, What's it like seeing this item, and does it bring back any particular memories or emotions? Well, for me, it it really does because it was the first scene that we shot in the bar in Nepal, and and um, you know we discover that Marion has it around her neck on a on a chain, and sort of slowly you know takes it off and is deciding, you know her her real journey sort of is what to do with this to whether to tell him she has it or not and whether she's going to sell it or not sell it and 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 what i love about it so much in the film is how they used john williams music and this kind of amazing moody sort of feeling in the bar once she's left there alone uh to create this real mystery and uh, kind of a, you know, this aura around it. Um, so I, I think it's that, that first time that it kind of has that beautiful reveal where I pull it up, you know, from underneath my shirt and suddenly we're, we're looking at it and you just, you know that it has some sort of major significance in the story, but we just don't know what yet. That's awesome. Mm. 
And then John, obviously, you know, you're, you interact with it when, it when we're discovering more of that significance. They're digging in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Uh, and uh, that lovely actor who plays the, uh, the old, old man, uh, yeah. who was, yeah. I he, 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 he was a wonderful old actor. And, um, and uh, was he not in Hitchcock's The Birds? Or was it his soon-to-be wife who was in it? I can't remember now, but he, he'd been around for years and he was wonderful. Mm. Um, and one kadam more for the Hebrew God whose ark this is. I think that's roughly what he says. Um, lovely. But how lovely to have one on a staff to be able to put it in the ground in your house and wait for the sun to enter and illuminate exactly the spot. You, you, my friends, with that headpiece of the staff, you will be able to, to, to find the true ark in the right place. Love it. I will say, John, to your point about digging in the wrong place, um, our design team did a little bit of an Easter egg, and there's a few different holes in that base, and it will only light up if you get it in the right hole. So, so trying to recreate that, you know, entertainment piece about, you know, measuring it out right and, and getting it in the right place. Uh, so we've been talking about our more fan-focused items, but we have a toy line for our younger audience as well, including our Action Crack and Whip, our Whip Action Indie, and our Worlds of Adventure line. So obviously the franchise is where it is today because younger audiences loved it in the 1980s. So how do you both feel being part of a brand so beloved by all ages and seeing so many people grow up along with the films? Well, you know, it's, it's extraordinary. I mean, the, the fact that this film has had such a beautiful long life and is you know, shown to, you know, from fathers and mothers to their children and grandchildren and even great-grandchildren at this point is extraordinary. And I think the toys and the action figures and all of these things, like the head of Ra, the staff of Ra, you know, they all become this, this sort of legacy that follows generation to generation. Like, I'm sure that the, the toys are also, you know, handed down uh, from, you know, parent to, to child. And and uh, I think it's kind of amazing. I, I have I have action figures for I mean, action figures were not a thing of my childhood, but they were a thing of my son's childhood. And I really treasure them. I, tre I treasure the ones that belong to him. I got kind of caught up in the uh, love of them and started collecting them myself. And, um, uh, you know, so I think there is this wonderful legacy that surrounds you know, these, these, a, a beloved film like that with these very rich characters. And then you, you kind of memorialize them in, in action figures that, you know, kids can really enjoy and play with. And, and I think, you know, this, at this point, there are five stories um, that they can, you know, inter, you know, play with the toys and go off on their own little adventure, Indiana Jones adventures. Um, uh, but it, it just seems like, you know, if I was five or six or 10 or 12, I, you know, that would be a, a world I would want to really, you know, that would be fantastic to play with, to play with these and, and to just make up my own journey, you know, my own little journeys and adventures. I, th I think there, there's a lot more material to mine uh, particularly from the first three, um, but particularly, I mean, Raiders was such an extraordinary film. Um, and I mean, you would want, you would want a rolling box 
with that big ball coming down on top of Harrison. Uh, you would want um, you would want Marion uh, 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 drinking, you know, with, with the Tibetan giant. Um, uh, and you would you would want you would want the flying wing, wouldn't you, with with Harrison fighting against the 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 revamped Tibetan giant who is now a German, you know, a, a German soldier and rather huge. Um, he was he was an English wrestler actually, and oh, wow. and, and pretty big and strong, but not I think quite as big as the the fellow that we see in in the latest one. You're going to have to create an extra big model for him. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and that's a, a great point. So, you know, you're both in Raiders of the Lost Ark, of course, and that was the franchise's start. And as you mentioned, John, just revolutionary film, uh, kind of a brand new kind of blockbuster. In addition to both of your characters in our adventure series toy line from that film, which we saw, we also have Indiana Jones, of course, Belloc, uh, Marcus Brody, and Tote. So who should come next? Uh, who do you think from Raiders of the Lost Ark would we need the most and would look the best in this toy form? Who are we missing? You've got Brody, I trust. Yep, absolutely. I think you ought to have that scene where they're all being turned into, uh, it, 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 they're all being burnt by the... Yep. <laughs> And we do have, you know, I don't know if we have any images, but our designers work that in as well. We have alternate heads uh, of kind of the melting faces. Um, so oh, fans wonderful. are able to recreate that scene. Again, with the arc, the opening of the arc, the build an artifact. Yes, yes. That's a wonderful thing, a wonderful moment. I mean, it could be fun to make, to make a, an action figure of the, the guy dressed in black that Harrison shoots when they, <laughs> that would be a wonderful one, you know. Oh, don't, don't bring it up. Stuntman actually spent three months rehearsing a, a bullwhip, uh, uh, the bullwhip against the scimitar fight. Yeah. Uh, we get to it. We're all sick that day. And, and we decide that Indy would just, uh, well, Indy decided that he would just draw his gun and shoot him. End of sequence. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so many memories uh, of such a great film. Yes. Uh, you know, other than Indy and Marcus Brody, your characters, Saul and Marion, are the only characters to appear in more than one Indiana Jones movie. So you both appeared in the films 40 plus years ago and also in the new century, which is certainly not common. Um, how have you approached the characters differently with the passage of years for you and for them? Each film, from from Marion's perspective, it starts at such a different time in in her, in her life and and in her relationship with Indy. Um, so they're sort of reunited in the first one, and there's this kind of, you know, they have some history that they have to work out um, and by the end of the film, we feel like they've really joined forces. They've become, you know, deeply connected to each other. And then, you know, I guess it was 20 some odd years until we did Crystal Skull. And in that one, they have gone their separate ways and we're, we're discovering little by little by little that she's had a child that we discover is Indiana Jones's child, and then we we end the, that story with the two of them getting married, and then in this new new one, I I don't want to reveal too much, but there's a little surprise. But um, uh, you know, their life is their life has been you know deeply uh, changed by events, and uh, sort of driven a wedge between them, and and you know the film kind of takes us on this little journey where eventually, you know, they, they, they resolve it. So it's this huge, like full circle experience. Um, it would have been wonderful to know a little more, I think about 
Marion's character, what has happened to her in this last episode, but just the, the way they decided to focus the story was really to not go in that direction. So um, we just get a little glimpse of Marion in this one. Uh, and we don't know much about where she's been or what's happened to her, her life. We know a little tiny bit, but uh, so it's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's spanned 40 some years, 43 yeah. years. It's incredible. Awesome. Amazing. And John, how about for Sala? Yes. I, I think for Sala, um, uh, again, the, the changes are considerable. Um, uh, I, I, uh, what I think of becomes of Sala is different to what we see in in the uh, in the film. But then perhaps it is later on. Um, uh, all actors create this inner life of their character, and and it has an independent life sometimes. Um, but Sala, Sala has changed and grown, and time has been perhaps fortunate, perhaps in some ways unfortunate, to him as well. Uh, I, again, I can't give away the, the the final thing. The the the, the Sala of of the Last Crusade. Uh, is a different character than he was in the first one. The first one is a younger and more thoughtful Sala. I think the the second one is a more Falstaffian and and perhaps comically inclined uh, Sala. Um, and I can't talk about the the other one, can I? The latest one, because that is their bottom. <laughs> Really? Now I think there, now I, I think we can now. Okay. Well, um, you'll have one of uh, of um, Marion and uh, and Harrison embracing. That's that's one you've got to have. Um, uh, and I think perhaps perhaps one of. Um, Oh, I think you ought to you ought to do one of 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 the old salad driving his New York taxi, not <laughs> his brother-in-law's car. <laughs> Great reference. Um, Actually, the brother-in-law's car is one that you ought to uh, you ought to have yes. with with the the four of us in it, isn't it? The four of us or three of us? Three of us. I, I think so. Think. Yeah, yeah. They can't see us up here. <laughs> um, <laughs> When did you find out that your characters would be returning, you know, in the new century? Obviously, Karen, you mentioned 20 some years later for Crystal Skull. Um, you know, I think at this point, obviously, John is in uh, Dial of Destiny. Karen, you've mentioned as well. When did you find out and what was your reaction? I think finally, maybe six months before they were going to shoot, I got um, sent the script to read and uh, saw, you know, what they had in mind for, for my character. So it was nice to put a little exclamation point yeah. <laughs> on, that, on that character and on that role. It meant a lot to me to, to be included in it. And, and may I say, Marion, um, Marion's little point on the exclamation mark actually, for me, actually makes the last picture, uh, the wonderful climax that it should be. I think your contribution to the film is far outweighs the amount of screen time that they gave you. It is superb. <laughs> what is it is it? memorable. Yeah. It wouldn't have been right uh, any other way. As you can tell, I'm a fan. <laughs> Definitely. Right back awesome. at you. <laughs> um, so 
of course, most of the toys that we've seen today, uh, with the exception of that retro Sala, but most of them are from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Obviously, one of the most iconic films in the series, the first one. Um, but of course, when you first started filming that movie in you know 1980, whenever it was, um, nobody knew about Indiana Jones. So how is it different seeing the toys and thinking about the franchise now in the wake of what has become one of the most iconic entertainment franchises of, of all time? I mean, Indiana Jones really sets a new, creates a new style of filmmaking. Yeah. Uh, and you see the, the extraordinary creative genius yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I guess just over the years, you just never know when you make a film. I mean, it could be a film that comes out and it could be a big hit in the theaters in the moment, but within a year, no one really is remembering it and they've moved on to other other films or, you know, it can be a film that just comes and goes and, and you never know how an audience is necessarily going to react to a film or how... How, what its legacy is going to be. Um, this film is fairly unique. So I, I think, you know, the films, as well as all of the, you know, toys and action figures and things that have surrounded them from really the very beginning, um, you know, have just, I think, just, uh, just created a deeper and deeper uh, experience there's just a resonance, I think, that comes from all of these different layers yeah. of the story and layers of the characters. And I mean, it's amazing that that 20 some odd years could go by without the fourth sequel. And yet, you know, the film sort of right away somehow was able to gather that audience so and yeah. all of the, you know, the the children that had grown up and adolescents that had grown up during that period, uh, back to the story. So that's a pretty powerful, that's a pretty powerful um, set center for uh, a film to have or a group of films to have to 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 be able to go away from the the story for twenty years come back and have people still interested yeah. in, in knowing, you know, what's going to happen with these characters. I, I think meeting the fans has changed me very considerably. Uh, they've taught me so much, really getting to know um, how unique each one is, how, how, it, how we have impacted on their lives because we've often come into their lives at a crucial moment. Like, my father has died and my father and I went and saw Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, my grandfather and my father and I went and saw uh, that. I haven't come to the great grandchild thing yet, but <laughs> certainly, the, uh, c c certainly the, the grandchild thing, yes, very much so. Um, and and it, it it has taught me how 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 really how 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 really significant we insignificant actors became to an entire generation or two or three, yeah. and God knows maybe four or five. Uh, Absolutely. Ge generations of filmmakers, of film, of film viewers, fans. <laughs> Humbling. I love when I particularly I see the, the children, the little boys dressed up as Indiana Jones or, you know, the little Marians in their red harem pants. And it's just so lovely to sort of see, you know, I think Indiana Jones is a, is a hero that, kids really aspire to be like. And I think there's not a lot of heroes. I mean, I don't know that you can aspire to be like Spider-Man or I mean, maybe you can in your fantasy, but Indiana Jones is a, is a kind of a real human being hero. Uh, he's, you know, very uh, real and vulnerable and, and human and, 
you know, he's he's the guy who goes to punch somebody in the jaw and hurts his yeah. hand instead of knocking the, the guy down. Um, so he's so beautifully relatable to, and I get so moved when I see these young kids, you know, in their, you know, some of them, you know, have, you know, they have the exact outfit down to the, you know, the whip and the hat and the, every little detail. Uh, and it, it just, it's fantastic. Um, so you were both on set together 40 plus years ago for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, obviously back together now for the fifth film. <laughs> Have you had the chance to work together on any other films or run into each other? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. would love to hear about that. We have. Well, we did a bunch of things together. We, we, we met in Disneyland in California at one point when they had come up with the Indiana Jones ride. Right. Yeah. And John and I did a, we did a, a film about the ride. Like, I, I think we might have been one of the first people to ever get on the ride and take the ride. Awesome. Um, and we made a little film. And, uh, and then a number of years later... We did a film in Italy and in London um, that was about Mordecai Venunu called Secret Weapon. Yes? Yes, that's right. Something like that. Yes. Yeah, you were, yeah. We played Mossad um, agents. <laughs> yes, that's right. I played, That's right. fairly um, evil, I played a fairly evil character. And uh, we had, that was a lot of fun. And... Um, our paths have continued to cross over the years. You know, there have been chunks of time where we haven't we haven't run into each other. But we had a really great um, relationship, friendship when we were doing Raiders of the Lost Ark. One last question for you. What does being part of the Indiana Jones franchise mean to you? And you mentioned kind of the the kids and passing it along. And, you know, I'm certainly one of those. My son was Indiana Jones for Halloween a couple of years. I'm counting mm -hmm. the years until I can share the movies with them. Um, but, yeah, amazing franchise, amazing characters. What does being part of this mean to you? You know, it's, it's such a beautiful... Uh, for me, connection to the world. Um, I feel like no matter where I have traveled, I've traveled in India, I've been all over S South America. You know, I mean, I can be walking down the street in a small town in Argentina and someone will come up to me and say, Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's it seems such a... Uh, beautiful way to interact with the world, you know, that there is this film that has meant so much to people and, and that a lot of times they've seen multiple times so they have a real, you know, connection to the characters and to the stories. And um, I think I've, I've grown to really love that connection. And I think specifically with Marion, there are so many young women who have come up to me and said how the strength of my character and the fact that she's so confident and so fights for herself and um, is, it has really had a, a major impact on them at a time in their life where they were not feeling maybe confident about themselves or not feeling like they had that strength or... Um, and so, of course, that's very moving because one doesn't necessarily have a clue that something you're doing is going to have that impact on an audience or on generations of young women. Um, and, and that's sort of something that comes as a surprise along the way. It came, it didn't, I didn't get that response right away. I mean, it was maybe after the film had been out for 10 years and it had sort of been in the culture and then in the, you know, uh, you know, been, been watched by, you know, a generation of, of, of young girls and, and adolescent girls. And, and um, you know, suddenly it started coming back people would come up to me and and talk to me about how much it, it meant to them. Yeah. So 
you know, that's been something I never could have predicted or ever could have imagined happening from, from being a part of these films. I, I, I have to endorse what you say. I think Marion Ravenswood as, as, as young, beautiful, thinking, and vibrant and feisty. I've heard, I've heard young people, young women in particular, uh, express their, uh, express their gratitude for that role model because it's quite early on in, in the early eighties. And it, it, she in a way became a talisman for that sort of um, deal with any situation. And uh, uh, even though it was frequently frightening, scary, um, but you had a delicious immediacy in, in, your, in your acting. In, in, no, in, there was a freshness in you. You were actually not just the girl next door, but the girl next door plus, plus the courage, <laughs> plus the intelligence, plus the passion and the capacity for love. And I think, I think one of the reasons why the film was successful is because the audience fell in love with you. I did. Uh, that's sweet. <laughs> but I think it was, uh, if you ask that question, what did it mean to us? I think in different ways, all of us were at a young point in our careers. I mean, I know Harrison had, had, had done a couple of pretty important things before, but for Harrison, this was the moment at which he demonstrated that he could carry a film and a franchise uh, on his own shoulders. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know you'd had a, a successful film career, uh, Karen, um, but it launched you really as a leading lady in your own right. Um, and I loved Starman. I thought what you did in Starman was just magical. And I, I'd, I'd just done Shogun and blundered my way through that, and then Victor Victoria. But Sala really gave me uh, an enormous uh, boost as a young up-and-coming character actor. Ronnie Lacey, who plays Tote, you know, the, 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 the nasty Nazi. Ronnie had given up acting and had decided to become an agent. He called all his friends up and said, you've all got lousy agents. I'm going to be an agent and I'm going to represent you and all will be wonderful for you. And three months later, he got offered that <laughs> wonderful <laughs> part in, That's how it works. in Raiders of the Lost Angeles. He, he didn't lose any friends, but I think they were all a bit <laughs> miffed. Um, <laughs> it, it, it made... And of course, um, you know, Paul Freeman. What a wonder. I think of all our performances, Paul's is the most nuanced and accomplished in many ways. Uh, and, 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 and Paul should have been a greater, a, a bigger name afterwards than that. And he could have been, but I think, <laughs> I think his interests were slightly elsewhere, and and I do not. I I know Paul. Well, we both know Paul uh, wonderfully well, and and he's he's a good man and is having a wonderful life and still working. Yeah. <laughs> As may we all for the next touching touching wood. <laughs> That's you know, fantastic. I was going to ask Hasbro, um, Crystal Skull. I don't think I've ever seen action figures from that film. Do they exist? Yes, we had an extensive line in 2008 
uh, with many figures from that film. So, and I, you know, I, I made a mental note of kind of your love of action figures. And so we'll connect afterwards and, and maybe sending a package your way. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I've seen very many of them, but maybe, you know, maybe that's because, you know, my son is now a grown up person and, <laughs> and a lot of them came into my life through my, my son. So yeah. that's probably why. And that's been the great part for not me. I, I haven't been around that long, but for Hasbro as a company, we, we had a designer round table uh, and spoke with designers from the original Kenner line, the 2008 Crystal Skull line, and then the current line. And so it's just been really amazing for Hasbro and Kenner as a company to have been involved uh, in some small way with this brand uh, for 40 plus years. Um, but I just wanted to thank you both. Uh, this was amazing. Uh, I loved hearing the stories, kind of the thoughts, what the toys mean to you, what the brand means to you. Uh, this is definitely a life highlight for me as a fan, uh, and I'm sure it will be for many members of the community out there. So thank you so much for joining us here today. Pleasure. How, how far back does Hasbro go? When, when was Hasbro started as a company? So that's a great question. I promise I didn't plant that. Uh, we're actually celebrating our 100th year uh, centennial <laughs> anniversary right now. Yes, there's, there's a whole amazing history. There's a book about it. But it started off, I believe, as a pencil company and got into toys uh, in the 40s and 50s with Mr. Potato Head. Uh, but yeah, they've been around for a while and obviously very fortunate to be associated with Lucasfilm for uh, you know going on almost 50 years. Wow, hundred percent. Well, well, I certainly remember Hasbro toys as a young child. Um, yeah. You know, uh, so I knew it was. I went back at least that far. But uh, wow, that's fantastic. Well, happy a hundredth anniversary, Hasbro. I'll just Thank be you. the first I'll pass to it along. <laughs> Awesome. Happy hundredth anniversary, Hasbro, and uh, send us the book. Ah! Absolutely, <laughs> yes, I definitely will. <laughs> So thank you again so much. Again, this has been amazing. So fortunate to have spent this time with you. Uh, all of you out in the community, thank you for tuning in uh, and looking forward to seeing the film. Uh, yes. Love the Sala figure. Thank you so much, John and Karen. And we will see you Yay. again soon. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.